See former champion John Virouette with him. You can't, you can't beat it when they come down to Notorious B.I.G. This dude probably wasn't even alive when Biggie did this. I love it. You have a tendency to uh, to, to have a to, to pay respect to the greats when you train in a gym. There's probably a lot of throwbacks, right? I would imagine. Yeah. Um, you know, you have a chance. You you know, when you when you take a look at the different gyms, whether it's you know Gratitude or um, you know all the different types, they, do they have, they bring different styles and energy, don't they? Do they they kind of stand for something they, different? They really do. I yeah. mean, mixed martial arts has evolved so much. I mean, I brought up black hole jujitsu earlier. They're black hole jujitsu and, and MMA now, but there's still a, a jiu-jitsu rich school where they compete a lot in jiu-jitsu. You know, we talk about Sukti Muay Thai. They're in MMA, but their bread and butter and their base a lot of times is that stand-up. You know, so really, yes, these gyms still have kind of a bread and butter for the most part. Mohawk Valley, their bread and butter is their wrestling and their dirty boxing. You know, so each one kind of has a flavor. There's always going to be those athletes there that are outliers and have their own skill set, but each gym does kind of have a flavor. Is there a preeminent gym in the area that if a fighter comes from this place that you know they're going to they're, they're gonna have the best chance to win? Uh, you know, the sport and the gyms have evolved to such a point, I don't think there's one gym. Yeah. I think that there's an upper echelons of gyms. You know, Grit and Gratitude, a great example. Bury, a great example. Uh, you know, where if they put somebody out there, you know that that person is going to be qualified to compete and they're going to show out. And that was the other thing that I was going to ask, too, because for a lot of these fighters, it is their first time entering the cage and such. At what point does a guy like Brian Bury say, okay, you're ready? Is that the fighter's decision, you think, typically? Or is that something that you'll talk, you know, for a few months about before you make your, your debut and stuff? Do you think that ultimately the fighter, or do I need my coach no, to the, believe in me, too, before no, I make that decision? No, the coach has to believe in you. Back yeah. in the day, you could kind of just take some fights. Yep. Nowadays, I mean, you know, the coaches have to almost okay you. You know, there are some outlying, and I'm going to use my air quotes, gyms out there that aren't really gyms. They just get some guys together to train. They don't really give a shit. Yep. But true mixed martial arts schools, you know, you've got to be vetted because you're wearing you're wearing their team yep. out there. Even if you're not wearing their clothes, you're representing that team. Absolutely. So you have to get that seal of approval by those coaches. And you're getting in there against a weapon. I mean, there's a weapon against you, so you have to be ready. And, or you know, it's, there's no... Uh, there's no half-assing it when you're in the cage here. There's no pretending. You know, and we talked about the flavors of the gym. Yeah. Bury's really has kind of that jiu-jitsu flavor, but this young man, he kind of broke that mold. He's one of these athletes, like I mentioned, his striking was on point. Again, they call him the marksman. Jake Safante's in the red tape, making his way to the cage. You know, it's tough because there aren't a, there aren't a ton of fights to go on. This feels like a, does this feel like an even matchup to you? You know, I really, I think so. On paper? So. Yeah. We're going to bring it up to Mike Falvo. Let's do it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the upcoming contest on the card for Cage Wars 54, scheduled for three three-minute rounds, is in our 155-pound division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in yesterday at 154.9 pounds. Representing Grizzlies Wrestling out of Springfield, Massachusetts, Josh Rosario. And his opponent standing cross cage, fighting out of the red corner. Weighed in yesterday at 156 pounds. Representing Brian Bury, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu out of Waterfleet, New York, Jake Sifonte. And the man in charge of the action when that door closes, Mr. David Bruce. Well, here we go, Will. The first of many exciting still on the card here at Cage Wars 54. Jake Safonte is looking like he's ready to go. I like this fight. Looks like a, like a loaded mousetrap, ready to spring. Boy, the high level, too, that we're seeing. Just the athleticism. You know, and these grit and gratitude guys, they've yeah. got really nice footwork. If you notice, he and Sebai, you know, they've got good lateral footwork. They, they, their feet are always in a good position. You can, you can tell that they train this Absolutely. regularly. And that's not always something you see from a wrestling-heavy school. It, 
fast hands. And I kind of wondered if he watched Cifonte's last fight, if he'd be willing to really stand and engage and trade with him, and apparently he is. Sucks that left leg in. Nice work. Cifonte's tried to post. Oh, he's looking to work for strong. that arm. Oh, nice reversal. Oh, he's got it. Cifonte's is clamping. He ends up on top. Right arm trapped underneath, looking to isolate. Jake Cifonte's takes him out. Oh, oh, nice job rolling. Great job there. You know, and this was the thing. We didn't get to see Cifonte's on the ground last time, and I said I wanted to see what he would do against an athlete like this from Gratitude. This is some high-level, very high-level stuff. Nice job in a side control. And again, it's important for our viewers to know as well, no ground and pound. No ground and pound to the face. face. Oh, nice reversal by Jake. <laughs> this is crazy. You know, and that really does, that dynamic changes sure. the fight. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Jake in his next fight without these shin guards on. I mean, but but with that being said, I mean, you could you could wail away at the body, which you, you think he could be mixing in, mixing in some punches here, or is it, is that not what he's trying to do? No, you could, but it's not not real damaging, and just I mean, your your technique and your game plan of attack is going to be a little bit different I where mean, you are on the body, what you're doing. Man, this is just reversal after reversal. Both these young men are excellent with their grappling acumen. Yes, good grappling match. Jake very strong, pushing against the cage. Right. It's good grappling, but it, it, it's got this, it's got a feel where there could just be a real violent out, uh, <laughs> outburst at any point. This is good stuff. Jake right in front of his own corner, Coach Brian Bury and James Carroll there. In, uh, an impossible round to score, but I think eventually this fight sorts itself out. 10 seconds to go in round number one. Man, this was a really, really close Interesting. round. Cifantes, a lot of control time, but again, there was quite a few reversals. Usually it's the usually it ends up being the man who ends up on top. Last thing that the judges will see. Oh, we still got two more rounds to settle this one. It's a good fight. Very good fight. Very evenly matched. Very evenly matched. Well, and that's the exciting part. Yeah. You're not gonna come to Cage Wars. You're not gonna see a tuna can in there fighting a really high level athlete. You know, I mean that used to be common everywhere in the state. And there still are some regional promotions who shall remain nameless who will throw any tuna can in there just to put some some uh, butts in the seats yep. you know and they'll put them in against somebody that they're they're not qualified to fight that does not happen here no this feels very very evenly matched both gentlemen in the cage here tonight tough round to score but i do think that eventually this fight works its way out and uh we do, I, my guess is we'll probably see a lot more grappling though I, that appears to be both of both of these athletes that's where their strength lies well, you know, Cifante's strength but is actually in the striking as well, but, you know, his his opponent, Rosario's just done a nice job forcing it to the ground. Cifantes did not seem uncomfortable at all no. on the ground, though. Would you agree with that? But again, coming from Bury's, yeah. you know, you're comfortable there. Very well-rounded. Mm. The footwork on both these guys is great. Their lateral movement. Their feints. I mean, you know, excellent young athletes. Right now, still trying to feel each other out. You know, and really, Rosario's making Cifantes think about his striking. Where in that last fight, Cifantes was just throwing. Yep. Now he knows he has to respect the wrestling of Rosario. Rosario respecting that left hand of, of Cifantes, keeping his right hand up to guard. And I, and I also think that I also think that Cifantes has uh, I, I think Rosario has earned Cifantes' respect in regard to striking and rightfully so. But here comes the marksman. And that's a good idea by him because he doesn't want to get forced into another grappling match. You know, strike, disengage, re-engage if he wants to keep it on the feet, because otherwise Rosario is such a good grappler, he's gonna take it to the ground if he stays that close. This does feel a little bit more tactical than some of the other some of the other matches we've had, I kind of like it. It's a skill level you don't expect to see with no. shin guards on. 
Shafante's looking for that head fake, not a reaction out of Rosario. Looking for those feints, but again, he's not getting a reaction on Rosario. Instead, Rosario picks oh his punches. Oh, nice job by Cifantes. Rosario tried to take him down. Both fighters too calm, relaxed. They're both right in front of us, and that was some of the explosive power that we thought we could see. Rosario yeah. trying to lock him down, trying to clear the hips. Less than a minute to go in round number two. Very competitive Looking fight. Looking for the roll, Cifantes feels it, slides over to side control. You, he you hear Rosario's corner telling him to shrimp. In other words, the last thing you want to do is just be on your back flat with a guy like Cifantes. He's trying to trap Cifantes' left leg with his left leg. Trying to use that left arm to frame. Cifantes trying to pass both. Rosario trying to roll. Cifantes very well aware. There you go. You, you hear his corner saying, use your hips, use your hips, get away. 15 seconds. A lot easier two. said than done, though. We got 10 seconds. Final well, few seconds. Well, if round one was too close to call, I think Cifantes more than likely with round number two in the books there. Too close to call. Anything can happen. Well, Third, I think Cifantes round. made his adjustment there. Yes. Cifantes was not pushing the, the action to the point where he could get sucked into a takedown. Right. You know, it was fight, disengage, fight, disengage, and keep the distance so he did not end up in that grappling exchange until he wanted to. Now, if you were in Rosario's corner, what would you be telling Rosario? Likely, he's he might be down two rounds. Well, you think he's down two rounds to nothing? What would you be telling him in this corner? Uh, I'd be telling you have to win this round emphatically. Whether you finish him this round or you just win this round emphatically, you want to try so for a 10-8 round. You're telling him he's down two rounds to nothing at this I'm point. I'm telling him he has to come out and win this round handily. I'm not telling him he's down two rounds, but he has to come out and win this round handily if he wants a chance to win this fight. And I think it is, I actually do think that it's in all likelihood it could be 1-1 one -one at this point. And I would agree. Yeah, yeah. I know sometimes coaches like to give them a little extra rub, a little extra burn. Like, you're getting your ass kicked. You got nothing left. <laughs> Go for the knockout. This would be interesting. But that can also kind of demotivate a fighter, where if you tell them, hey, you have to win this round emphatically, sometimes that will get a better response. Yep. Nice left kick to the body. Ooh. You know, I, I just kind of want to see Cifantes let his hands go, don't you? Oh, that was a big... I do. Like he you got know, he's trying there. to use the feints, but he's not getting the reaction yeah. that, that he'd like, so I, I'd like to see him double up some jabs. I, I think he'd have success if he if he stayed in the pocket. Uh, his, his power and speed is... Good job taking the back. What can you do with it now? Doesn't look like much. Oh, nice job, Zay. Cifantes, can he get on top? Rosario doing a good job. Nice job there by yeah, Cifantes. Yeah, Cifantes in the side control. And with two minutes left, he could just burn. He could just burn this whole third, third round. Rosario turning away, looking to give his back. Jake was trying to step over the mount. Nice job by Jake in the mount. Excellent job being relentless on that. Now again, it's novice, so no ground and pound to the face. Something to remember that it does. It alters your strategy. You know, it makes you wonder, could this fight have been over if you are able to strike to the face? You're, I think sometimes the novice thing could hurt a high-level performer. Yes, I agree. You know? Again, it changes that dynamic. Totally, totally. I, but I feel like Jake Cifantes is hitting his stride right now. He's he's finally found the keys Absolute. to uh, to the lock that is Rosario. And he's winning this round convincingly. And he's looked good doing so. He's looked good. Good control, mm -hmm. excellent awareness on the ground, stepping over to mount, and then maintaining mount. Not just stepping into mount, but maintaining it. Rosario tries to roll, but he still stays on top. Now he can't, he, he can't, he should keep his hands away from Rosario's face. He, 
Good job by Safantes. Wow. Rosario's doing the right things, but Jake is just doing the right things in response. Yeah. This looks like a this looks like a quality win. Yes. Body does, triangle on by Safantes. You, you get the feeling that if Rosario was ma matched up against most other fighters in their in their their they uh, in their debut, he'd have better luck. He's, you know. That seems like a weird stand-up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why he. So Fontes must have done something. Maybe an illegal shot to the head while they, while they were down. Only 10 seconds left to go. It pretty much doesn't matter at this point. Safante is doing a nice job staying out of the way. You, you can almost feel that he knows he's got this fight in the bag. He's just trying to stay out of damage and, and get to the final bell. It looks like he does a lot of things well. It looks like he's got a bright future. He really does. And again, we didn't get to see him pressed like he was today. Yeah. And, and really, he showed some showed some metal. And the fact, yeah, right. And the fact that he won a fight where stylistically it wasn't the matchup that he would have wanted and still found a way to get the win, that is pretty good. Fighting against an excellent grappler with an excellent wrestling pedigree with longer reach. You know, he did a really nice job. And, you know, that being said, I really look forward to seeing Rosario in here again as well. Oh, I agree. These, these grit and gratitude guys and gals, they, they really can fight. Yeah. I think I think that fight was more of a testament to Safantis than it would, would be a knock on Rosario. Yes, 100%. Especially after that first round, Safantes made the necessary adjustments to stay within his wheelhouse and get what appears to us to be the win. That was a good fight and a good win, I think. We think. We'll see what happens. And again, anything can happen. All right, Eddie Rivera up there has the uh, the black and orange aqua bag made famous Ooh, by Mike Tyson. I like that, that was the one. first bag that Mike Tyson got from him. That's nice. Looks like Pluto, doesn't it? A you know, bit of planet? and here's the cool Go thing: ahead. Mike Tyson was using those bags, yeah. and he wasn't sponsored by them. Right. And that's how he you know it's good. He just bought them because they felt that's better how for you know him it's to good. hit. You know, a lot of these athletes and influencers, like you can't really trust whether they're recommending something because you don't know what they get paid. Right. Mike Tyson literally said to me, I can punch this because it feels that much better for me. God, Biggie Smalls, how many years later, still makes me want to <laughs> do a carjacking. I got to take my headset off now for this. Man, I'm going to throw an elbow your way, Brian Cody. Very nice. I was, Very like, nice. I was like the only 15-year-old white kid in my school that went to the Notorious B.I.G. concert. I... What? Yeah, I was Albany High, so a little bit different demographics and metrics, but we were we were big into hip hop. Did you go to that show when it was at the uh, Knickerbocker? Uh, that was um, when when nobody knew who Puff Daddy was. I, I we're gonna bring it up to Mike Falvo. I did not. I did and now, tickets. ladies and gentlemen, how about go. a round of applause for these two great, great fighters? <laughs> After three hard-fought rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges have scored the fight in favor for your winner by way of unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, Jake Sifantes. Jake Sifantes getting that win. Again, more of a testament, I think, to Jake Sifantes than it is a knock on Joshua Rosario.